Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So hopefully this is going to work. Um, I'm going to use a Science of Love Lawn Fawn stamp set with stitched hillside backdrop in portrait. I've also got the Coles ABCs Lawn Fawn for the sentiment. And then the tiny gift box holiday hats add-on, which is super cute. <laughs> Um, I also have Honeybee Stamps Toy Store House Builder uh, for the tree. And I'm also using um, Honeybee Stamps Itty Bitty Pumpkins. As well as the pumpkins from and the bats from the Haunted House add-on from Honeybee Stamps. Um, I didn't show the bats there, but I do actually use them, so... <laughs> And then I have an eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock, just in a purple that I happen to have. So for the grass part, I'm going to use rustic wilderness and mowed lawn distress inks. And then for the sky, I've got milled lavender and Victorian velvet. And I'm just going to start with the um, milled lavender on this piece of cardstock. This is the sort of inside piece that cuts out of the portrait. Uh, hillside backdrop <laughs> that cuts out so I thought well I'll just inlay it back into the section and that will create my sky part um, and I gotta say these are not two colors one's more purple one's more pink um, as you can see but when they blend they actually blend quite nicely together um, so I quite liked it in the end uh, and I think that's the nice thing about distressings is just in particular or any inks that you're blending is to just try different combos to see if they're along the same sort of color palette they should work together so this is a new it's a scotch branded tape that i found um on amazon um i'm sure you can get it elsewhere and what i'm doing is it's kind of like the purple tape i think but i don't know it's the same thing but it's basically a very low tack tape and what i'm doing here is i'm masking off the around where the stitched edge is but what I actually wanted to do <laughs> and I realized this once I start inking of course um, is that I actually wanted to frame the whole frame so basically I just needed to mask off the bottom section <laughs> um, and and not and sort of the edge so that I have a thicker white border around the edge in the end it works out fine um, and it's it's fine <laughs> but that wasn't actually the original plan and so it tends to look a little uh like i've got this teeny tiny little white border but <laughs> i actually wanted a thicker border than that so because of that this is where i realized that i should have also um masked off the top half because that needs to make that needs to be the same color as the sky so I started with the mode lawn and I've got the rustic wilderness which I'm going to go along the edges to create just a darker edge on my grass. Um, I've not used this color combo before but I really like it. It just it turned out to be quite a good combination of color <laughs> of greens. Um, normally I use mode lawn and citru twisted citron um, as my go-to green combo but I really like this. It turned out really really well. And then, of course, to match my sky, I've started with the milled lavender and then going in with the Victorian velvet, velvet at least, um, on the top edge there, <laughs> which if I'd masked it off properly, I wouldn't have needed to do any of that. But <laughs> anyway, so now instead of having a nice chunky white border around it, I've got this teeny tiny little border, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, I think in the end, it probably works out a little better anyway, so... It, it's good it's all good and then i spritz it with a distress sprayer um, just with some water um this is not uh this is like regular cardstock it's about 300 gsm so it's not it, although it reacts it's not going to have the same sort of uh reaction i guess that you would if you had watercolor paper or mixed media paper now for my trees i have different shades of purple here and what i another thing you can do is use your alcohol markers um or pencils or anything like that to sort of add some extra texture to those pieces so that's what i'm doing here and this is where i realized that after many many years my <laughs> my trusty uh sort of colorless blender that's the word 
um it's finally run out of ink so i'll have to uh, get a refill for that which is the first copic refill i've ever had to do so or buy so that'll be interesting to see where i can find that um but I'm just using it just to blend out those colours towards the edge because I kind of like the colour of the cardstock but I also wanted to just deepen that, the, the purples. And there's two shades of purple here. Um, my tree trunk is black. I know it's unusual for a, for a tree trunk to be black but I figured it's Halloween, it kind of works. So you'll see where I'll tie that in more with other colours, uh, with other pieces later on. Um, and these are the honeybee um this is the toy store one of the dies that you get with the toy store um, add-on uh, or builder and it's a very easy tree to put together but any die cut tree um whether it's from your cricket or you know your um you know another die that you have uh it will work just as well so as long as it kind of looks like a Halloween tree. I want to say Christmas tree, but because <laughs> that's what it's meant for, but <laughs> I'm making it into a Halloween tree. So um, the same thing with these little pumpkins. These are from the Haunted House add-on and I am actually going to inlay the face in. Um, so, hold on. Sorry about that. My, <laughs> my uh, dog started barking. Of course. So these are the little um pumpkins from like I say from the um i've lost my train of thought now <laughs> anyway the little pumpkin so i also wanted to inlay the faces back in to them and these are going to kind of act like little baubles for our tree um but I, and I was going to use washi tape just to hold those pieces in place. But actually I thought, because I'm sticking them straight on the tree, I may as well use double-sided tape. Makes more sense. It's sticky. Um, and you can stick them straight in. So I'm just arranging them on the tree, roughly where I want them. And then um, I will stick them down and then take these tiny little pieces. <laughs> And the eyes are probably the tiniest bits. So I started with the mouths because they were pretty straightforward and easy to even pick up and, and put in. Um, and this is an inlay technique. So this is something you can do with just about anything um, die cut related. So um, it's a really nice way. It's a really nice effect, um, but it's completely flat. So it's very, very cool. And I've done this before in other videos as well. So just getting the last of these little teeny tiny little pieces <laughs> and this last one was just not having it <laughs> oh. and then i do have the little bats which are also from the haunted house add-on which is where these pumpkins come from <laughs> thought a train is back um and so i'm just using some um glue just to stick them down um, you could add dimension to it with a little pop dot foam dot kind of thing if you wanted to and um, just getting them stuck on there and that's my little halloween tree all decorated and ready for halloween <laughs> so and i've seen this on pinterest with like actual trees that people decorate for halloween and i'd love to do that one year but i couldn't find any cards that had it so I was chuffed I thought well, I really want to do this let's go for it so these are the itty bitty pumpkins and they do actually do it, it like embosses a line into it so you've got a bit more dimension for your pumpkins um, but using the YR 15 and 16 just wasn't quite a contrast enough with the alcohol markers so I kind of just need to work on that myself <laughs> so um, if the contrast is good enough, then it will, you'll see that sort of more shadowing depth kind of thing, which is what I was trying to get, <laughs> but it didn't quite work out like that. <laughs> but you can still see it, but it's not as um, prominent as it would be if if it had a slightly darker colour than I, than I did have. And then the, what will be the stalks are actually cut out in some black cardstock again, 
so it's you, you could easily do some browns and greens and things like that but I just thought it worked really well with the um you know with the with the whole Halloween themed thing <laughs> that I had going on here and also the pumpkin faces are black as well so for me that just worked out quite you know I thought that sort of tied in much better and then these are the little hats from the tiny gift box and of course my neighbor's <laughs> mowing now <laughs> this voiceover is really at a weird angle at a whack today um these are the little witch hats that it comes with it comes with like a bobble hat and also a santa hat um and they're meant for the tiny gift box critters so that you can create even if it's not a sort of like the bat for halloween or the deer for winter um you can create a Halloween or a winter themed creature out of any of them the cat the dog the whatever the duck and so I am using these two little characters that I die cut and colored for, um, in a no line coloring um, out of the science of love stamp set and I thought these two little birds were just perfect <laughs> I thought they were kind of geeky dorky little guys <laughs> and I just thought that they were super cute for this Halloween theme so I kind of colored them so that all the colors kind of match so there's purples and greens and orange and and yellow um, within and purple I think I said purple within that um, within the whole card but also I made his hat blue kind of like a wizard and then hers black like she's the little witch so they're a little witch and a wizard so <laughs> that was the idea anyway so this is where I've put the portrait backdrop back down onto the card front um, and put the sky in and then I'm just arranging the pumpkins and the tree the tree I should have tucked in at this point where that slope comes down um, for the hill I should have at that point tucked it in there I think it would have looked better so this is where <laughs> do as I say not as I do <laughs> because I'm now gonna try and do this while I've already stuck it down so um, that's just something to bear in mind <laughs> maybe maybe don't have your adhesive on the back just quite then um, or plan it a bit better Janine <laughs> um, but I think it looks better where it's tucked slightly behind the heel rather than in front of it gives the the even though it's all flat or mostly flat it still gives more dimension to the the characters and, and everything else going on um, and then for this little um, tiny pumpkin because there's dimension with the card and there's almost like layers with the card I thought it was better to actually add a bit of a foam um, I think in the end I used a glue dot because that was enough height for it um, just to add that little bit of dimension but not be full-on um, 3d if that makes sense and then just to, trying to decide where to put my sentiment which is going to be boo um and i decided to just put it up in the like sky i guess and so i've got the little letters that i'm just sticking on with a glue pen um, really easy to do um, nothing too strenuous about that <laughs> at all and then the last, one of the last things I'm going to do is just add some extra pizzazz to it. So I've got a clear shimmer pen from Nouveau. I'm going to put that on all, I think on pretty much all the black pieces. So the, um, the sentiment, the bats, uh, the faces on the pumpkin on the tree, I believe that's what gets shimmered. Um, and then... I will go over those shimmery bits once they're all dry um, which doesn't take long it's really quite quick um, once they're dry then I will put them onto um, sorry I will add some crystal glaze over the top um, and I love that combination it just looks when it dries obviously it'll look a little murky right now and a little milky maybe that's the right word <laughs> um, and once it dries it just looks fantastic i just it's one of my favorite looks i just think it looks so brilliant so um i will do that for again for the little the, the boo sign and then the um the pumpkins on the tree and the bats on the tree and i think for the buckles on the 
um, little wizard and witch hats. Um, oh, and their glasses. Of course, that's a nice way to add that sort of, you know, to get that look like some, you know, like there's somebody or something wearing glasses is to do their little, <laughs> the, the, the actual glass part. Um, I just think it's so cute. <laughs> Actually, it looks really cool when it's dry. Um, so on the pumpkins themselves, I felt like they still needed something. So I grabbed a Sakura gel pen and this is a clear sparkle. Again, it's one of those things that they're not super expensive to buy, but when you've got them, they last a long time. Um, well, I suppose depending how often you use them, but they do last quite a long time. I've had this one for years um, and that just for me just added something i went into the grooves of like where the embossed or debossed bits were on the pumpkins themselves um, and that made quite a bit of difference just to the pumpkins um, even though the shading that like i say when i was coloring it wasn't quite working out the way i wanted it to so i hope you've enjoyed this this is kind of a weird <laughs> voiceover because i'm having some issues with stuff like that so if this if you're watching and listening and you've got the voiceover then thanks for staying um if not if it didn't make the cut then there'll be music and you won't know that i've done this but anyway i hope you've enjoyed this guys and i will see you in the next one bye for now